The Monkey King disowns his premature son and orders his death, but the kid was secretly adopted. After a few years, the prince returns to claim his throne. In the middle of a thick forest, there lives a tribe of apes who never dare to get down from their giant tree. Today, they are celebrating the birth of their first prince. Suddenly, the royal advisor, Vladimir, arrives and announces that the prince has entered this world. However, he seems a little distressed. He avoids everyone and rushes to King Simon. Vladimir wants the king to meet the queen immediately. Simon rushes inside the chamber and delightfully picks up his son. He seems really healthy and strong, but Vladimir informs us that the queen actually gave birth to twins. The firstborn is a premature baby, but according to the rules, he is the rightful heir of the throne. The king gets worried and the tribe's witch adds fuel to fire. She calls the firstborn a curse and advises the king to get rid of him. The king is also afraid of the criticism of the tribe's people and orders Vladimir to kill the firstborn. Vladimir takes the baby on the top of the tree to feed him to the hungry wolves beneath. He takes pity on the baby and starts rethinking his actions, but before he can change his mind, the baby slips and falls down. The baby grabs on a vine and dodges the wolf but his right hand gets cut off. The baby lands in a lower branch where a proboscis monkey named Ian is living. He starts playing with the baby and decides to look after him. The baby is named Edward and he grows up really fast. Edward becomes a smart young ape, but his broken right arm makes the simplest tasks difficult for him. However, he is full of enthusiasm and always playing around with Ian. After coming back from a walk, Edward starts looking for the figs he saved for lunch. They are nowhere to be seen. At first he blames Ian, but then he spots the rats nearby. They are the real culprit. Edward starts lying down a trap, but accidentally discovers the tree sap. It's a sticky liquid that grabs everything it touches. Edward gets really fond of it and decides to use it to catch the rats. But before he can do that, he hears an announcement. A competition of a popular ape game similar to basketball is going to be held soon. Edward and Ian love that game, but they never get invited because of their abnormalities. But they always watch the game while hiding among the trees. The king and the royal advisor are there too as the prince Vanya is also playing. Unlike Edward, Vanya has grown up into a muscular and skilled ape. He is also an expert at this game and makes one goal after another. Ian gets really excited to see the ball and makes several tries to catch the ball, but Edward stops him, or otherwise they will get caught. But when the ball reaches really close to Ian, he can't stop himself and grabs the ball. His feet slip and he falls down along with the ball and Edward. The whole atmosphere is ruined and the ball gets stuck in a hole. The apes surround Ian and bullies the poor guy. Ian is not good at speaking and can't explain himself. To save his friend, Edward puts a little tree sap on a stick and uses it to take out the ball. To distract the apes, Edward calls the tree sap a magic trick that only he can perform. The apes fall for the trick except Vanya. He walks forward and snatches the ball to continue the game but it is stuck to his hand due to the tree sap. All the apes gather to pull the ball away. It jumps in the air and accidentally lands on King Simon's head. He asks Vladimir to take it off, but when Vladimir does that, the king's hair also gets pulled off and Simon becomes bald. He gets really mad and shouts at Vladimir. The advisor puts the blame on his cousin and the king falls for his lies. The next morning, Edward sees Ian staring at the sunrise. He always claims that there exists a place called the White Mountains, where life is going to be better. Ian says that the birds told him about the White Mountains, but Edward doubts that. Their conversation is interrupted by Vladimir who informs Edward that King Simon has summoned him. Edward gets really excited and immediately reports to the king. The king asks if he really knows magic but Edward refuses to accept that and explains that he is only a discoverer. He also shows the tree sap and how it can be used. Then he grabs some leaves and makes a beautiful crown for the king. Everyone admires how classy it looks and this makes King Simon really happy. Edward still has few other tricks to show. He asks Ian to bring a lotus leaf and he fills it with water. Edward uses the reflection on water to show the king how he looks. The king panics at first, but then he starts understanding how a reflection works. Other apes are impressed as well. Edward pulls down a few strong vines and bends them to make a swing for the king. Simon loves that as well. Edward is becoming king's favorite and the royal witch doesn't like it. She rushes to her chamber and uses her dark magic to summon a swarm of insects that attacks the apes. The king also gets anxious for himself. Suddenly, his swing breaks and the king falls down. Vanya witnesses this and throws Edward down from the tree as a punishment. Once he is gone, the tribe realizes that the king is held on a branch and he is still alive. 
King Simon gets really angry after knowing that Vanya impatiently threw away Edward. Luckily, Edward has survived the fall and opens his eyes on the ground. He looks around and all he can see is bare land. The apes may have forgotten him already, but his true friend Ian comes to his rescue. He hangs down on a vine to grab on Edward but the vine is not long enough. At first, Edward tries to reach Ian, but then he suddenly decides to use this chance to explore the land. Ian stops him from the reckless act, but Edward has made up his mind. He keeps walking until he reaches a group of ostriches. They are holding some fruit in their beak, which makes Edward hungry. But the thing that attracts him more is the ability of ostriches to stand on two feet. Edward wants to do the same and lifts his hands above the ground. He feels imbalanced at first, but suddenly feels lighter and more efficient. He also gets to see the giraffes and several other gorgeous animals he had never witnessed before. Edward slowly lifts his feet to try walking on the ground. Now his injured right arm will not affect his walk. Before he can master that, a huge number of wolves proceed his way. The ostriches run away immediately, but Edward still has to learn how to do that. He tries running, but unintentionally does it backwards. To escape the wolves, he faces towards them and continues running backwards. After a few miles, he finally learns how to do it in the right way. Now he runs nearly as fast as the ostriches, but the wolves have no plan of lagging behind either. Edward reaches a herd of rhinoceros who also start running after him. Edward eventually reaches near to the ape's tree and all the apes can witness that he is in danger. Unfortunately, no one dares to get on the ground to help him. The king is seeing this all as well, and he starts feeling worried for Edward because he has already realized that Edward is his firstborn, because he has the unique style of feet, like his bloodline. All of a sudden, Simon jumps down on the ground and saves Edward by shielding him away from the rhinoceros. Once the rhinoceros leave and the smoke subsides, Edward gets to know that Simon has gotten severely injured. Vanya hangs down on a vine to pick up his dad, but Simon has accepted his fate. He is going to die soon. But as his last words, he tells Edward that he is the royal heir, and Simon is ashamed of his decision of throwing him away. Before Edward can ask any other question, Simon dies. Vanya firmly declares that he is never going to accept Edward as his brother. He takes Simon's deed body back to the tree and shares the bad news with the rest of the tribe. They soon declare Vanya as their next king and look forward to his reign. Vladimir is also trying to get close to Vanya and keep on his designation of the royal advisor. However, Vanya had eavesdropped on his conversation before and knows that it was Vladimir's mistake because of which Edward is alive. Vladimir tries to explain that it was an accident, but Vanya declares him a rebel. Vladimir is removed from his post and banished from the tribe. Afterwards, Vanya proceeds to greet his civilians and explains that he is going to be the most efficient king they have ever got. The whole tribe is fully supporting him. Meanwhile, Edward decides to continue his life on the ground and convinces Ian to accompany him as well, but Ian is too scared of the ground. Suddenly, the sky gets covered with dark clouds followed by a thunderstorm. A lightning falls on a nearby tree and causes a fire. Edward gets really curious to see it and proceeds to have a closer look. Just after a few tries, he learns how to light up a branch and carry the fire around. The apes are also looking at him from the top and get really impressed by his discovery. Suddenly, it starts to rain which puts out the fire. Before Edward can take shelter, a tornado heads his way. It also reaches the apes and takes away several apes including Vladimir. Edward is also stuck in the tornado and sees a female ape hanging on a branch. She is really gorgeous and Edward falls in love at the first sight. Once the tornado subsides, Edward tries to save the female ape who slips down from a cliff. Edward ties up a rope to get her but before they can reach the top, the rope breaks. Luckily, Ian reached there in time and saved both apes. Edward thanks him and tries to communicate with the female ape, but she acts wildly and doesn't even know how to speak. She starts running away while Edward keeps following her. She passes through several unknown deadly areas, but Edward doesn't hold back and he is determined to earn the female ape's attention. She finally stops on the top of a volcano and decides to trust Edward because of the efforts he made for her. She can actually talk and introduces herself as Lucy. Edward tells her all about the tree and his family living there. He also teaches her how to walk on two feet. Edward has just started the evolution of his species. He uses the lava to light fire on a stick, and under its light, he travels back to his tree. He tells the other apes that fire is not something they should be afraid of. 
It can help them see in the dark and keep them warm. The apes start to agree with him, and on seeing this, the witch declares that Edward was born as a curse to the tribe. The apes banish him again and Edward and Lucy are forced to take shelter in a wolf's den, but the wolf doesn't harm them because they have fire. In the Dane, the two apes share their first kiss. Starting from the next day, they keep discovering new techniques to collect food and use the fire to cook them. The mouthwatering aroma reaches the treetop and makes all the apes really hungry. They have realized that Edward was right about the fire. The apes also want to taste the delicious food and get down on the ground. Edward delightfully welcomes them but Lucy is still not ready to trust them. She only allows them to stay for dinner. But after the dinner, the apes learn how to dance and sing and make their bond stronger. Meanwhile, only Vanya and his queen are left on the tree. After a few months, Edward teaches all the new things to the apes. Now they walk on two feet, cook food on fire and construct buildings. Vanya can see the whole village arising before his eyes, but he is still not willing to leave his tree. The witch is still angry at Edward and sends another swarm of insects to destroy the whole village. The apes get triggered by this cruel treatment and decide to put the tree on fire. Edward tries to stop them but they don't listen at all. Vanya suffers from the fire and almost dies but Edward comes to his rescue in time. Vanya feels ashamed for his previous behavior and finally accepts Edward as his brother. They both join their tribe and set on a journey to find another place to live. After traveling for miles, they finally reach the heavenly white mountains Ian used to talk about. Now the apes can freely live here and will evolve to an even more intelligent species. Even if the whole world is against you, they can't take away what's written in your fate. You will get it sooner or later.